official podcast of the Jacksonville Public Library. I'm Jenna. And I'm Hurley. And today we have two librarian ninjas on the show. They are Allison McCarty and Jill Hale. But before we get into that, Jenna, what you reading? You checked it out with your library card. Tell us what you're reading. Well, I am glad you asked that question, Hurley. And... Uh, Back by popular demand, we're going to let you know what we're reading. So I, again, just finished The Greatest Love Story Ever Told by Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally. Two of my favorite people on this earth. Hilarious. Oh my gosh. If you loved Parks and Rec, you should read this book slash listen to it. It's incredible. So I listened to it on audio, of course, which is the only way to read this book because it is like pretty much read like a podcast almost. and it's read by the author yes right? read by the author authors and they kind of go back and forth and it's just really fun and they talk about how they met and you know their careers and kind of how they met when I think now Megan is like 61 they're like 12 years apart and so when they met Nick was only like 29 or something and she thought that was nuts but anyways and he wasn't that well known yet so they kind of talk about how it was for him like when he wasn't well known and then when Parks and Rec was in the thick of it and no one really talked to Megan and yeah it's just really great they go back and forth and they do awesome things like do puzzles and listen to audiobooks together it's so adorable yeah they're precious and if you follow us on Instagram we did a little review of some of those pictures on our Instagram story So, and I did check out the book just to look at the pictures, (laughs) but it was was well worth it. So that's a great book. It's called The Greatest Love Story Ever Told by Megan Mullally and Nick Offerman. That's awesome. Hurley, what are you reading? Well, I just finished reading a YA novel called And We're Off. It's by an author named Dana Schwartz, who I've been a fan of on Twitter for a really long time. Mm. She's been running a parody Twitter account called at Guy in Your MFA for, mm. for years and years now. Basically, the account is set up so she's mocking the privileged guy that is inevitably always in every single writing workshop ever mm. um and it's so hilarious one of one of her the more popular tweets it goes the world is finally ready to hear the opinions of me a 24 year old white man so <laughs> it's just so freaking funny um I heard that she wrote a book I think it came out last year it's called and we're off and it's a YA novel about a girl who is really interested in painting and her grandfather is a famous painter and she gets accepted to this artist colony in Ireland. So Mm. she goes on this long like European adventure and she's supposed to go by herself but at the very last minute her mom who's not the most excited about her daughter pursuing a career in the arts Mm -hmm. decides to go with her. So of course they bond a lot and it's a really sweet story and and I loved it. I I would recommend this to any young lady who maybe has a more complicated relationship with her mom. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I almost texted you about this because I'm friends with you on Goodreads, Obs. Obs. And you do it said that you had finished this, but you didn't rate it. I didn't know if you liked it or not. I don't rate. <sighs> I don't. Okay, so if you just don't follow Hurley on Goodreads, you'll just have to hear about if she really liked the book or not on the it's podcast. It's true. But let me tell you why I don't read. Okay. Because I don't finish every book. That's if fair. I don't like a book, I'm not going to finish it. That's if fair. I like a book, I'll finish it. So if I finish a book, I think it shows that I, I liked it. You liked it. Yeah. Okay. It's either four or five stars, typically. Everything. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. If I finish it. Yeah. See, I have a did not finish, like shelf on goodreads too it's only a couple things because i will push through a book even if i don't really like it that much and then i'll just give it like one star or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay that's good to know then. so many differences in our reading styles now i know you're reading okay mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. i know how you rate stuff that's great all right so that's what we're reading we'll have those linked on our podcast page if you want to check them out obviously they're all here at the library and now we're going to get into some new books Tell us what's happening today, Hurley. So we have, like I said at the top, we have two librarian ninjas on the show today. We have Allison McCarty, who's the acquisitions manager for the Jacksonville Public Library, as well as Jill Hale, who is the collection development manager. And we asked these two a a little bit about what they do, um, just to give you a little spoiler these two are pretty much in charge of putting books on the shelves at the library. Yes. They have the coolest That's a job. big deal. Yeah. They're both kind of a big deal. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So Allison will tell us, but she does, you know, getting the books. Once they get to the um, our warehouse, basically, she gets them all cataloged and linked and um, out to all the branches to go on the shelf. And then um, Jill has the job of purchasing the books, which is pretty sweet. And she'll give us a little insight into how that happens. And it's not magic. It is definitely ninja librarian skills, but it's still really, really interesting to hear. So a little later in our episode, Allison is also going to share with us some books that will be definitely be bestsellers this year, as well as some books that you should keep your eyes peeled for and start putting on hold because she thinks they're going to be amazing books. So she is, she has the coolest book recommendations. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. a big deal, guys. It's a, a little sneak peek of what's happening in the next couple of months on the books. So make sure you wait around for that. Yep. So before we get into that sneak peek, we will hear from Jill Hale, who is the collection development manager here at JPL. Jill, thanks so much for coming on Completely Booked with us today. I'm glad to be here. Thank yeah, you. so tell us a little bit about how long you've been with Jacksonville Public Library and what is your job title? I've been with Jacksonville Public Library for 20 years and my job title is Collection Development Librarian. Um, I work in the Collection Development Department with a small staff and we purchase all the library materials for the system. We, we purchase system-wide, so wow. it goes out to all of our locations. Man, I would say you probably have one of the coolest jobs in the library system, getting to purchase all the books that end up on the shelves. So tell us what's that, what, what's that like? Well, it's exciting and it's challenging. A lot of times people think that we purchase directly from publishers or we have these you know, relationships with publishers, but we don't really have that. We use um, a large vendor who is probably the largest in the United States. And they make all of the books available to public libraries, bookstores, and um, we work through them. So for us, there's like the glamorous part where we're ordering the books, and then there's the not so glamorous part of having to deal with um, the actual city procurement process of having to get everything in order to be able to spend our money. So the fun part, of course, is when all that is set up, we are able to go forth and buy. And it's not just books. We work with a number of vendors because we buy books for all of our readers in the community, from our tiniest babies to our oldest community members. But we also buy all of the audiobooks on CD. We buy music. We buy DVDs. We buy the e-content that are on all on all of our platforms. So we're buying all of those things as well as the databases that are used um, by um, all of our researchers. So we are really a full 360 shop in terms of what we're buying for the system. Jeez, that's a tough job. And like you said, you have a small staff. Mm -hmm. So, So tell us a little bit about the process. So how do you decide what to buy? I don't, I just, I don't know. It's a yeah, mystery it, to me. It seems like it would be a lot of like predictions and like a little bit of a magic eight ball sometimes. It is. It's not so magical. We actually <laughs> use quite a lot of our own knowledge um, from doing the job. You know, we're trained librarians and um, we look at different things. We look at um, the collection data the collection overall throughout the system. So we see what's popular and where, um, what, and what content, you know, what content is popular in different locations and what formats are popular. So we're able to buy the right books for the right locations. And um, we use a variety of sources. Um, we use review journals, um, which are kind of unique to people who don't know about how libraries operate but um, they give you a brief synopsis of books and we can read some descriptions and get an idea of if it would be a good fit for our collection. Um, Some things we just get um, because they're popular, like our best-selling authors like James Patterson and um, David Baldacci and Gina Devonovich. We, you know, we don't have to think about that. Those are just bestsellers and we have that on our adult level, our teen level and our children's level. So it works out really well. Um, So there's kind of a combination of looking at the type of material, looking at data for how it's done in the system, and um, taking chances on new and unique kinds of books for the library. 
Yeah, that sounds fun. How yeah. do you know when a new and unique book is going to be a great fit for our collection? Um, well, what we do is there are so many books published. I mean, probably tens of thousands of books a year, hundreds of thousands possibly. And so we get a pretty good feel for like what people are interested in by looking at what gets a lot of holds. And so people like to read certain types of books um, that are similar. So, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, everyone's into New Year's resolutions. And um, so all of those books about, you know, lifestyle and decluttering and things like that. So the Marie Kondo kind of mm -hmm. excitement. So we look for things similar to that and we find some kind of unique similarities and we buy those. So some things we know are going to fly off the shelves, but we also want to have a really broad and unique collection um, for things that are maybe um, not going to be um, as known or popular, but are really like special, unique finds for our customers, those hidden gems in the collection that they find and check out. That's pretty cool. And what if there's a book that you don't think is going to be that popular, but it ends up being a huge hit? We order more. Yeah, we just yes. keep ordering. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. we do. We look at the holds, and what we're doing is we're trying to get the books out into the hands of our readers. So we're trying to get as many copies as we can reasonably. Um, we don't, we can't buy a book for every hold, but we try to buy as many as we can um, to meet the hold demand, mm -hmm. so that people don't have to wait too long. Right. And so, and you, like you said, you've been here for twenty years. So how has this, you know, this role? changed with the introduction of e-content like digital materials audiobooks ebooks it has changed the landscape is so different um when i started in collection development um it's so interesting to have seen like kind of like the origination of that e-content with um one of our first e-content providers um they were just this small company just coming out with ebooks and then we've added different vendors and it's grown and what's so interesting is it really is a balancing act because we have segments of our community who love to hold a book in their hand they love it and then we have other people who are just delighted by the fact that they can download something and look at it on their device whether it's their phone or their e-reader um, or if they want to listen to something and it's e-audio or we have some people who are still really tied to the actual audiobook on CD and love to listen to it in their cars, although it's hard to find mm -hmm. um, CD players in cars anymore, but um, people still do do that. So it's a real balancing act to get the same kind of content across all of those platforms within our budget. So, Right. And we hear that the, the e-content books are just like, crazy expensive compared to print books is that true they they are it's all based on the publishing industry and okay. what models they have set forth um, for libraries so we just work within the format and the formula which they have set up and we buy what we can we keep up with what we need to repurchase because sometimes they require repurchasing mm. and we just try to make that e-content as available as we would a book right and we always say that i'm a digital book like listener and reader and hurley's a print book reader what do you like to read i am a print book reader yeah. uh, high five <laughs> <laughs> nice. i love to hold a book in my hand um i spend a lot of my day looking at a computer screen so when i'm off i just want to have a book i don't want to have a, a lit screen or a backlit screen or um, anything like that and i just want to have the physical book in my hand um and I really love reading more than I love listening, just mm. because I feel like my it's how I'm more in tuned to um, think about the characters and the plot. I'm yeah. just more visual in terms of reading. Yeah. Also, ebooks don't have that great book smell. True. Yeah. Yes. You that brand new book smell. If they were able to pump that out of a Kindle, <laughs> I might switch. I over. bet it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't you be use, surprised. And you can't use an awesome bookmark. We were talking about bookmarks it's the other true. day. Like, I bought bookmarks at the bookstore. I remember really? specifically. You bought them? Yes. yes. Wow. Oh, I man. did as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever a bought a bookmark. Fancy bookmark. Yeah. Man. 
I use the I've had bookmarks that are just like paper bookmarks. I've had them since like middle school. <laughs> I don't know why. I just keep up with them for some reason. No, my <laughs> sister always said that she only uses concert tickets. Oh, like, oh gosh. <laughs> Stop it, Allison. All right, so we're also in a brand new year, which means new books coming out. Is there some sort of, I know you said it wasn't magic, but I still think it's magic. Is there some sort of secret society that gives you the release date of new books in the beginning of the year? Um, Well, we don't get all the release dates at the beginning of the year, simply because a lot of it is based on the publishing industry. So we have certain times of year that are big publishing seasons, the fall and spring publishing seasons. So right now we have books coming out um, that will kind of increase towards spring and then um, summer reading and then the fall season is really big. So the best-selling authors, you know, will be writing whatever they're writing and other authors as well. And so we'll just be going through as the year progresses and we'll be looking at a variety of things. We look at the reviews, but also we look at what's coming. You know, we get lists from Library Aware, some of our um, in-house kind of uh, resources. But we also look at the New York Times bestseller list. We look at other bestseller lists. Um, we look at what's in the media. Um, we look far a broad range of different um, places to see what's popular and we keep in mind that we buy material for our entire community so what we're looking for is books on every subject matter you could imagine whether it's fiction or nonfiction, whether it's geared to adult to teens to children we really want to fill the hands of our customers with things that will be of interest to them so every subject matter is um, what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. And I know we always say that like we can't be all things to all people, but I think our collection is how we are all things to all people. We are in that respect because we do. We have books on, a, I mean, the widest variety of viewpoints. Something for everyone is out there in the collection. Yeah. And is it I don't know. I'm sure you've been doing it long enough that it's not. But is it difficult sometimes to realize like, oh, I would never read this book, but I need to purchase it for my customers. I feel like that would be almost a hard mindset to get into. The way that we we work and just being a librarian and the people that I work with on my staff, that's, you know, we basically look for things that are well reviewed, that have been well written. Mm -hmm. And we go based on that. Um, It's not a matter of Um, Is it something I would read or not read? It's really based on the merits of the book and um, and would it be of interest to the people in our community? And we look at what else in those subject areas, if it's nonfiction or if it's a fiction book in a certain genre, um, if they've been reading in that area, then we continue to buy for them. Okay, that's awesome. And I, I've gotten this question a lot too, especially like when Oprah puts out her book pick or whatever, and it's in the catalog as on order and it says we have one copy and I get all the messages saying why are you only getting one copy of this book so tell us a little bit about how that works when when books aren't on the shelf yet well that's just a quirk of our system what we do is when we buy material um, particularly books but also with our e-content before it's actually released we want it in the catalog for our customers to see they get so excited if we don't have something in the catalog that they know is coming up they'll let us know. And so we want to have the items out there. And so with Circe, our library online catalog, um, when we download items into the catalog, it's just a quirk of how it downloads and appears in the catalog as one copy. Um, But if you actually click into the title, you will have a tab where you can see it's on order for several locations. So you don't have to worry it's not one copy. Okay. We are <laughs> buying plenty of copies for everybody. And we're constantly watching the holds list to make sure that we have enough copies to meet demand. Wow. So even before they get to the shelf, if you see that there's 100 holds and you only, only order 10. We are going to order more. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, that's great. And what if there is a book that someone doesn't see in the catalog that's already been out that we don't have that's an easy one too we have on our web page um, in our catalog a link um, it's with contact us so it's how they contact anyone else at the library it's called suggest a purchase 
and they can fill out that form and email it to us and we answer those emails. We actually send a response. So if we can buy it, we'll let you know that we're going to. And if for some reason it's not available for us to purchase because it's no longer in print or um, it's something that you know we just can't get, we'll let you know that as well. Yeah, I had that happen. I think I, I suggested a purchase like last week and I did get an email back pretty fast saying that our vendor didn't carry it. Yes. Because I think it was sort of a local, a more local book. But yeah, they let me know right away that um, we couldn't get it because and there was a reason. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful, wonderful service. Sweet. Well, this is amazing. I had no idea how any of this works. So this yeah, has been neither. great, Jill. Thank you so much oh, you're welcome. for letting us all know how this all happens. Allison, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So you have one of the most interesting jobs at the library. I think so. <laughs> Tell us what you do. Uh, okay, so I am the acquisitions manager in support services, which means that I am in charge of what we call Bob. It's the books on belt area. There's a nice little video on YouTube if it's anybody great. wants to check it out. Sure oh, we're is. posting it again. We're yes. posting it again. Excellent. <laughs> but yeah, so basically the UPS truck drops off all of the materials at our loading dock and we take them from there. We get them checked into the system. We get them cataloged, processed, linked and sorted and sent back out to the branches and we do it as fast as possible so that we can get everybody all the books that they want. Amazing, nice. it's like magic. It is. Um, so Allison, you brought some predictions along for best sellers and books to watch out for this year. What are some of those on your list? Yeah, absolutely. So we get a lot of best sellers in as quickly as possible in our system. Um, we have a program in place that sends us hundreds of copies of a lot of the really big bestsellers. So it's really fun to watch them all come in um, and then get sent out to all the people who are waiting for them. Uh, we get a ton of them every month, um, but I just wanted to highlight a few that I think are going to be really cool in the upcoming mm, two months for cool. bestsellers. Um, so on February 5th, I Owe You One by Sophie Kinsella is coming out. Um, she's the Confessions of a Shopaholic author. Ah, and she's written okay. yeah. tons of other books. Uh, this new one is like a cute little romance. Um, a woman does a favor for a guy and he gives her an IOU, like a written IOU. And uh, she decides to cash it in uh, to get her new boyfriend a job um but of course that's not how it goes because it's a romance novel and they end up trading ious back and forth and maybe some sparks fly Ooh, so yeah it sounds really exciting um i want to see that as a movie and it's not even out as a book yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good feeling though i know the sign of a good synopsis and exactly yes technically that book comes out tomorrow because this is february 4th oh fancy. so and that's already in the catalog right yes okay so will it say how many copies we have even though it's not technically released yet how does that work um so when we get it in the catalog in advance, it's just gonna have one little copy for Maine, but you can put as many holds as you want on that. Okay. And then when we actually get it in, uh, in Bob, and we process it and we link it, that linking process is what puts all the separate copies into the system. And so that's when you'll see that we have, you know, 40 or 50, I'm not sure how many of these we're ordering, copies in the system. Okay, awesome, so yeah. put it on hold. All right, next one. Absolutely. So also uh, tomorrow, uh, Connections in Death by J.D. Robb, which is the, I cannot believe this, the 48th installment in the In Death series. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Crazy. I know. She started it in 1995 and it's what? still going. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's nuts. So I don't think anybody needs a synopsis of that. It's an in-depth book. If you like J.D. Robb, you're going to read it. Yeah, so that's just how it goes. Get yep. that on hold right now. It's going to be great. Um, a Justified Murder by Jude Devereaux comes out on February 26th, and that is the second installment in her Medlar Mystery series, um, which takes place in a fictional Florida town. So I thought right. that would be especially I saw cool. that. Yeah, that's I'm cool. really interested in any murder mystery that's set in Florida. Oh, I know. Yeah. If it says Florida in the title, I'm, like, mean, mm, I'm intrigued. Yeah, mm -hmm. that means it's going to be crazy, right? Like super weird oh, stuff course. happens in Florida. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Only the weirdest. I love it. Um, and then in March, on March 5th, uh, Silent Night by Danielle Steele comes out, and that follows a child star who has a really bad accident that leaves her unable to speak. Um, and so she and her like 
momager are trying mm-hmm. to figure out what to do with their lives after this big accident. Wow, yeah, and Danielle Steele, oh my gosh, she has been cranking out books forever, yes. it feels like. So many. I read somewhere that she writes like six books a year, and oh she goodness. often spends like 24 hours straight just writing, writing, writing. And she always says, like, people are like, what's your secret? How do you become a best-selling writer? She's like, just write, like, all the time. Like, that's how you do it. <laughs> so I love how, like, down-to-earth she is. She's so cool. Yeah. I like that. It's like that 10,000 hours thing. Exactly. Yeah, you do something for 10,000 hours, you're an expert. Yep. She must be, like, a super uh-huh. double yeah. expert. Gosh, yep. how many words is that? I don't even know. Ooh, so many. Millions of words. Nuts. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, one more big bestseller, um, Harlan Coben's new book, Run Away, is out on March 19th, which, as with all of his books, is going to be a twisty thriller. Uh, this is specifically about a guy whose daughter has run away and he sort of finds her and is trying to track her down. And I have no idea what weird twist is going to happen in the middle of it, but it's going to be something crazy. Yeah, yeah. I actually heard about this one on Goodreads and it sounds like it's a really it's a great book that like explores the heartbreak of being a parent of an addict mm-hmm. too. So mm. I'm really interested. I did mark it to read on oh, Goodreads. So I'm excited. I know I'm going to have to one. go through and do that for these. Mm-hmm. And we'll have all these on our website, of course. So you can go ahead and put them on hold. Excellent. All right. So what books should we watch out for this year besides those bestsellers? Yeah. So those bestsellers are the ones we know people are going to come check them out because they're going to be great and everybody wants them. Um, but the ones that you may not be aware of that are coming out, um, the first one I think might be like the biggest one on this list, which is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. She wrote The Hate You Give, which came out two years ago in 2017. Um, and that was about police violence and balancing life between a, you know, a lower class black community and an upper class white community. Um, and this book is really interesting um if you get the hate you give like now there's a preview of this book at the end of it um and so i read that preview when i read the book and in the preview the main character brie is having a rap battle so, like she's part of a rap community that does rap battles mm-hmm. and awesome. i just have no idea what any of that is and so it's fascinating to me um and so this book really focuses more on like that black community, like black families and um, what life is like there. And this girl wants to make it big in rap. She wants to get out of her community. Um, and just knowing what Angie Thomas did with The Hate You Give, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's yeah. going to be huge. For sure. It's going to win all the awards, I'm sure, and as one, The Hate You Give did. Yeah, that one comes out tomorrow as yes, well. Also. So, gosh. A lot of big books coming out tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And I know Angie Thomas's books are YA, um, but I know a lot of adults really love her writing. Yes. So that's for everybody. Mm-hmm. What's up next? Okay, so this is my favorite like I am so excited about this book um I told you guys when you asked me to come on that I was going to talk about this book whether you wanted me to or not um so the author is Jane Harper this book uh The Lost Man also comes out tomorrow yeah she's an Australian author right yes yeah and so if anybody listening loves Tana French who I adore she's an Irish author who writes crime novels um Jane Harper is to me like the Australian Tana French and the perfect way to fill that hole in your heart after Tana French writes a book and then doesn't write another one for a couple of years. (laughs) You can go read some Jane Harper. And they're, you know, they're similar styles. Um, They use place as a really important part of the book. Um, So for Tana French, that's Dublin. For Jane Harper, that's various places around Australia. Um, generally kind of rural Australia. This new book, The Lost Man, takes place in the outback. Um, There are two brothers who have neighboring cattle ranches, and they meet apparently in between their two cattle ranches and find their third brother dead. And so they're trying to figure out how this happened. Like, did he just walk out there and die of exposure? Did somebody kill him? It's the outback. Like, Nobody saw anything. There's no cameras to take pictures or anybody who would be around to have seen what happened except the killer, if there is one. And so I'm really excited to find out what is going on with this book. It's going to be great. Awesome. Oh, man. And one of her other previous novels is going to be a movie. 
the dry is in production Excellent. this month i think to um they're filming and the lead character is eric banna and he was the husband in the time traveler's wife oh, i think yeah okay. you know who i'm talking about mm -hmm. yeah so that'll be pretty sweet i'm have to read those books before they come out in these movies yeah absolutely and so we already have the dry and force of nature ready for you guys to grab mm. uh, in case you get too late on that holds list for the lost man perfect Cool. And up next, we have the first book in a trilogy I saw, right? Yes. Uh, so Marlon James wrote A Brief History of Seven Killings back in 2014, and it won the Man Booker and several other awards. It was a really big book then, and it has been too many years since that <laughs> book. Uh, but he is back with a, with a first book in a planned trilogy. Um, the Seven, A Brief History of Seven Killings was... A historical fiction novel about Bob Marley, but this uh, this book, Black Leopard Red Wolf, also out tomorrow, um, is a fantasy novel, and the internet says it's going to be an African Game of Thrones. I don't know how much I trust things like that. I've been burned before with descriptions like that, <laughs> but it sounds really interesting. It follows a a tracker who is apparently called Tracker, uh, so self-descriptive mm -hmm. um but it follows this guy tracker who gets involved in the search for a missing boy um but starts to wonder like why is he missing and what's gonna happen when i find him and that kind of thing i'm like yes <laughs> tell me more let me get in on this book it sounds like it's gonna be great awesome and Sweet. i saw the cover art for this book it's so striking it is gorgeous. and over here on completely booked we are fine with you all judging books by their covers okay. because it keeps you reading. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so you never know what you'll up. find just looking at the cover. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so what's up next? Awesome. Okay, so a little later, like next week, uh, we have a book coming out called "Finding Dorothy" by Elizabeth Letts, and I didn't actually know anything. I didn't know anything about this book until I went around my department asking for recommendations from people. What are some good books coming out soon that you guys are excited about? And this sounds fascinating. So this is a historical fiction based on true events um, about Maud Gage Baum, who is the widow of L. Frank Baum, and her interactions with Judy Garland during the making of The Wizard of Oz. Um, so apparently they met, they kind of hung out, <laughs> they struck up a friendship, which I had no idea, and so I'm really intrigued. Um, and so it talks about that, but it also talks about Maud's life um, as the daughter of a suffragette and a prairie homesteader out in, I assume, Kansas, uh, where <laughs> The Wizard of Oz happens, and just her life, which I knew she must have existed, but I had never really thought about her. And so to get a look into her life, I think it's going to be really cool. Right. Yeah. This is one of those books when I read the synopsis, I was like, is this a novel? Like this yeah, sounds right. like nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So I'm it does. so excited to see how this book does. Yeah. And the author mm -hmm. puts all of her research um, on her website as well, like oh, that she awesome. did for this book. It's insane. Like I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I was like, oh my gosh, oh, like cool. every period of time in her life is like catalog. There's pictures. It's really cool. That is really Yeah, this cool. is going to be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. And then another really big book for, for March, um, on March 12th, Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis, uh, as you may guess, the author of Girl Wash Your Face, which was a huge hit. There's still a ton of holds on that book. We've just ordered more to fill them. Um, so if you're waiting, I promise you'll get it soon. Um, and... These books are sort of self-help, sort of memory, sort of, you know, go out and get stuff done sort of books. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> if, if you are that kind of person who needs just a kick in the pants to get life started, I think both of these books would be really good. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Jenna, you read Girl, Wash Your Face, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, it was, it was inspiring. You know, it was good. And um, I think that this one's going to be another big hit. And she also, I think the ebook for this one is already up on overdrive you can put it on hold already yes. so get in line if you like ebooks so cool and i love the topic of this book i'm excited to read it because this is something that i've noticed a lot like in the rhetoric over the past couple of years is like women need to stop apologizing mm -hmm. for things that you don't need to apologize for mm -hmm. and i've noticed myself doing that i've noticed my friends doing that and 
it's just I love that there's this push for that now just like take ownership and don't apologize you don't have to so mm-hmm. I'm excited to read yeah, this book this will be cool mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and since you brought up overdrive I should mention um that yes sometimes the books that we order through overdrive um we order them early enough that you can actually put a hold on them before they come out you can also um if you look for a book in overdrive and you don't see it um you can put in a request that we purchase it and that goes for books that are already out and books that are upcoming of course if they're upcoming you may not see it until the day it comes out just because of the way we order things. Um, but if you put in that request for purchase and we do purchase it, you are on the holds list automatically. So Sweet. you can kind of get in uh, at the front of that list, which is a, a really cool way of doing it. Yeah, I've done that before. I've suggested a book that we didn't own and they bought it and I got it right away. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Very cool. And I think you have one more book for us today, right, Allison? I do. This one does not come out until April. So I don't know if this is one's going to be in the catalog yet or not. Um, but this is going to be really interesting. So Brett Easton Ellis, uh, who wrote American Psycho and Less Than Zero, um, the last book he wrote, uh, Imperial Bedrooms, came out almost 10 years ago. It has been a long time. And this this book, White, uh, which comes out April 16th, is going to be his first work of nonfiction, and it's going to apparently be really provocative <laughs> and talk a lot about our current culture and social media and this like cult of likability that Brett Easton Ellis thinks we're all part of, which maybe we are, um, and from his vantage point, as he describes it, uh, of a white privileged male. So he's not going to pull any punches, which I don't think anybody expected him to (laughs) anyway. Um, And it's just going to be interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was reading up on this book and he had wanted to call it something like white privileged male. um, And he decided to go with just the word white because there's so much just in that one word that he could really play off of it. Um, some of the some of the um, works in this book, uh, it's a collection of essays, pieces um, that were previously published and also some new pieces specifically for this book. So it won't be all his current opinion on things, but some from the past as well. So that should be really interesting to see maybe how he changes his mind over time. Very nice. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I love any, any book that kind of talks about social media and authenticity that mm-hmm. we're kind of under the spell of so that'll be I think that's going to be one of those books where the minute it goes out in April you're going to see people talking about it on yeah. Twitter mm-hmm. and yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so Victor. everybody get ahead of the curve yeah take part in the conversation put it on hold do it well thank you so much for joining us today Allison it yeah, was a pleasure was awesome. yeah it was great to be here yeah thanks Jenna, what books are you most excited about that are coming out this year? I don't know. All those ones you gave us in the beginning were really good. So I might check at least one of one or two of those out, of course. But also, like we had talked about before in the Best Books episode, um, Tomi Adeyemi, Child- Children of Blood and Bone, is coming out with her sequel this year. So June 4th, Children of Virtue and Vengeance Ooh, is coming out. It's a great title. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. They haven't even released the um, the book cover yet, so yeah, super exciting. What great. about you? What's coming out? Um, I'm most excited about a book called "Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered," I which is that. by Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark, who are the hosts of the podcast "My Favorite Murder," which is my fave. Yes, that book comes out on May 28th, and I oh my god, I'm so excited to read this book because they co-authored it. It's sort of like a co-memoir. Mm-hmm. They both talk about their own lives. I know they're gonna talk about their friendship a lot they're also big advocates for mental health Mm -hmm. and they're very open about going to therapy together and things like that so I'm excited to read all about that yeah that's a super popular podcast so that's Mm -hmm. gonna be a huge hit oh yeah sure this year oh yeah that's awesome it's gonna fly off those library shelves Mm -mm -mm. well we want to thank uh Allison and Jill for taking some time out of their very busy librarian schedules to come and chat with us today like we said we have a video of how the acquisition stuff happens with Allison herself so we'll post that on Facebook make sure you check that Bob video out it's yes pretty books cool. on belt Bob what a guy we'll also have that on our podcast page at jackspubliclibrary.org slash podcast 
make sure you subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. Yes, and we'd love it if you rated us and left us a review. Please, please, please. Make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms at Jack's Library. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. This podcast was produced by Brian Thomas, a.k.a. BT, a.k.a. Producer Brian. Brian. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you left me hanging. Uh-huh. <laughs>